Hello, and welcome to the Amodeler tutorial. We will be going through the process of creating Zapito shorts using Amodeler. To use Amodeler and Zapito Studio simultaneously, you must have Zapito Studio installed and updated to the latest version. First, install Amodeler using the Umodeler hub in the Unity scene where Zapito Studio is installed. To make Zapito modeling easier, download and install the Zapito rigging helper package file from the Umodeler hub. Drag the Creator Basset Zapito file from the Zapito rigging helper folder into the scene. At this time, set the coordinates to 0, 0, 0. Select an object in the hierarchy and press the F shortcut key to focus the camera on that object. The initial Unity project's light direction is reversed, causing a backlight shadow on the sample body. We will fix this by changing the light direction. Select the directional light in the hierarchy and press the Rotate Gizmo shortcut key to rotate it along the green guide. The light has rotated, and the shadow has changed to look better. Now let's create a Umodeler object. Click on the middle box shaped icon among the Umodeler object icons at the top of the scene to confirm that a Umodeler object is created in the hierarchy. Umodeler related icons appear in the inspector. We'll create a basic box shape. In the Umodeler inspector, select the box tool from the basic shape group, drag the bottom surface to create it and then move the mouse upwards to create the height surface. Since it was created at an arbitrary location, change the coordinate values to 0, 0, 0 to align it with the body. However, it does not exactly match the body. This is because the point where you first clicked when creating the object becomes the pivot, causing the pivot position to be off to one side. To resolve this, you need to move the pivot back to the center of the created box. By using the Pivot to Center tool in the MISP group to reset the pivot, the pivot is repositioned to the center of the box. Align the coordinates to 0, 0, 0 again in the inspector, and the center will match the body. Let's use the Loop Cut tool to increase the number of faces. Select the Loop Cut tool in the Add group, and when you hover your mouse over a box space, a blue guide appears. When you place the cursor close to the horizontal edge of the box, a blue vertical direction guide appears, and we will click it to split the center. The single face has been divided, increasing the number of faces. Let's modify the model to match the body shape. However, the box covers the body, making it impossible to see the shape. So select the vertex among the elements representing vertex edge, and face at the top of the scene and turn on X-ray mode in the inspector. When X-ray mode is on, the box becomes semi-transparent, allowing you to modify the shape while seeing the body shape inside. Select the vertex among the elements and drag the mouse to multi-select several vertices within the area. You can then change the move, rotate, and scale gizmo using the keyboard shortcuts W, E, R, Press the W key to activate the move gizmo and move the vertex. People and clothing are symmetrical, so use the mirror function to model by modifying one side and making the other side the same. Let's use the mirror function with the modifier. Add mirror from the modifiers that appear when you press the plus button in the modifier stack. You can see the central axis being created. At this point, the direction the arrow points is the direction of duplication. Select the source mesh again in the modifier and move the vertex to modify the box shape to fit the body shape.
perform a loop cut near the crotch to create shorts from a simple box shape around the thigh. To create the shape of the shorts, let's use the extrude function. Extrude is a function that creates and moves faces. Select the face overlapped with the thigh, and while holding down shift, move it to execute the extrude. Once the shape is somewhat established, let's collapse the modifier stack. The mirror modifier created earlier overlays the mirror effect without changing the source mesh data. This is similar to layers in Photoshop that apply effects without affecting the original image. However, to produce the final data with the mirror reflected in the source mesh, you need to apply the results created by the modifier to the source mesh through collapsing. The first icon in the bottom right corner of the modifier stack is the collapse icon. Pressing this button applies all changes up to the selected modifiers to the source mesh. Let's press the collapse button with the mirror modifier selected. The mirror modifier has been collapsed and reflected in the original source mesh. To increase the number of faces collectively, use the subdivide tool in the add group. Each time you click the subdivide tool, the number of faces increases, transforming into a smoother shape. For now, we will click only once. We will make a more natural shape using the tools in the deform group on this subdivided mesh. Select the relax brush tool in the deform group. A circular guide that follows the cursor is created called a brush and the vertices inside this area are affected. The Relax tool adjusts the vertex spacing within the brush area to make the overall uniform. While using the Relax tool, if individual vertices need modification, use the Element tool and Gizmo to modify them. To create space on the waist and thighs, choose the side that crosses the body. Run this laser tool or press the corresponding hotkey, the light key to clear it. If the body is hidden and not visible, you can temporarily turn off the body by pressing the eye icon in the hierarchy. Remove the thighs by selecting the face where they overlap with the body. Modify the model shape to fit your body. Select the edge tool at the top of the scene, then double-click an edge of the mesh, and it will select all connected edges in the direction the cursor points. Modify the selected edges using the gizmo. Select the Relax tool and Allurement and use Gizmo to refine the overall shape. When the shape has been created to some extent, rename the object to Pants in the hierarchy. We will use the Smoothing Group feature to make the jagged-looking Pants surface appear smooth. In a Modeler X, faces with the same smoothing group are displayed as a single curved surface. Smoothing groups can be grouped through the number buttons exposed only when the face tool is selected. Select the face element tool and select all faces, then press group 1 in the inspector to bind them all to the same smoothing group 1. Pressing 1 again will release the smoothing group, 
We will tie all the faces of the pants into a single smoothing group so that the entire surface appears smooth. Once the shape is formed, let's process the inner parts of the waist and thigh areas. Double-click the edge above the waist to loop select, and then create by pulling with the extrude function. Using the scale gizmo on the created edge, pull it inward to make it smaller, and then push it inside the pants with the move gizmo. Do the same for the bottom of the pants around the thigh area. Now, refine the overall shape of the pants again. Collapse the mirror to complete the pants modeling. Now let's use painting mode to apply colors and patterns to the pants. Open the UV editor in the modeling mode by opening the editor window. To paint, the UV must be unwrapped in modeling. Unwrapping is the process of converting a 3D object to a 2D plane, mapping the coordinates so that images can be applied to the object. Select the desired face and run the unwrap tool in the unwrap group to perform UV unwrapping. Usually, faces connected and facing in a similar direction are grouped for unwrapping. If you perform a plane unwrap with all faces selected, the faces will overlap, so unwrap only half at a time. With the center of the shorts as a reference, select the back faces and proceed with a plane unwrap. When executing a plane unwrap, the face is unwrapped as if it is spread out on a plane. Unwrap one side, then use the Invert Select tool to ensure no faces are missed, and unfold the faces on the other side. In the unfolded faces, a group of adjacent faces is called an island. Click the island icon at the top of the editor to select it in island units, and use the gizmo to resize and place it appropriately. Use the 90-degree rotation tool in the UV editor to rotate the islands to symmetrical angles and place them to utilize the texture space as much as possible. In the UV editor, you can also edit selected elements using Move, Rotate, and Scale gizmos. In the UV editor, you can easily perform transformations such as rotation and inversion using the tools in the Quick Transform group. In this case, use the 90-degree rotation tool twice to rotate 180 degrees. Once unwrapping is complete, move to the Painting tab for coloring. Select the resolution and Zapito template, choose the base color that will be displayed, and click the Start Painting button to begin painting. Select the brush tool and change attributes such as size, intensity, and spacing. You can preview the pattern the brush will create in the preview at the top of the window. Choose the desired color from the palette. Then select the brush tool and try painting directly on the 3D model in the scene view. To paint while viewing the unwrapped UV flat plane, open the 2D painting editor window using the editor button. As you use the brush tool to apply color on the 3D model, the painting is synchronized and occurs in the 2D window as well. By dragging the mouse on the mesh, you can see the color and brush shape applied as intended. You can also easily fill colors by using the Polygon Fill tool for face-by-face -face coloring or selection area-based coloring.
The Rect Fill tool fills all faces within the dragged area in a batch, which is useful for quickly coloring multiple faces. All painting tools can be used in both the 3D and 2D editor windows. There is a phenomenon where the color looks strange at the UV boundary. To quickly resolve this issue, try using the dilation tool that automatically expands the color at the boundary. Click the dilation tool button in the layer group, and you can confirm the color expansion in the painting 2D window. In the scene view, you can see that the odd looking areas are resolved through this process. Using your desired colors and tools, paint the pants. Now let's use stickers, which are easy to use when painting special or complex shapes. Create a sticker layer by clicking the plus button in the layer window. The order of layers is such that the top layer is displayed over the ones below. To add a specific shape to the sticker layer, drag an image file into the albedo slot. The texture placed in the albedo appears very large in the unwrapped space, as it occupies the entire space. You need to stamp the sticker again to make it the desired size. The sticker brush follows in a box shape, and by holding the control key while moving the mouse, you can change its size and direction. After adjusting the size and direction, click to see the sticker from the image slot stamped in the desired size and direction. Since you can use only one image in a sticker layer, Add a new sticker layer if you want to add more stickers. You can only use one image for the sticker layer. If you want to add a sticker, add a new sticker layer. Unnecessary layers can be deleted using the minus button. When all the work is done, use the export button to extract the created painting data as an image. All painting layers are combined into a single image. Now let's begin the rigging process. Rigging is the process of connecting the created model to a skeleton, making it ready for animation. First, delete the creator base set object in the hierarchy. Drag the weight transfer mesh a pose file from the Zapito helper package downloaded from the hub into the scene and set the coordinates to 0, 0, 0. In the hierarchy, unpack the weight transfer mesh prefab instance, then copy the hips object located under the transfer mesh to create a duplicate. Drag and place the copied hips bone object into the already completed pants model. Next, rename the copied hips bone object. Once the hierarchy is established, click the rigging tab in the umodeler inspector. Upon checking the precautions, you will see a warning that you need to set a root bone. Drag the bone object you just placed under the pens model in the hierarchy and insert it into the root bone slot. Once the warning disappears, click the Start Rigging button. Upon entering rigging mode, the bone structure will appear overlapped in the scene. Instead of doing it manually, we will use the Weight Transfer feature to easily perform rigging here. Weight transfer is a feature that transfers weight information from a mesh that already has weight values. Click the weight transfer tool. You will see an empty slot at the bottom. This is where you need to place the reference mesh from which to get the weight values. Drag and insert the weight transfer mesh that was originally imported from Hierarchy. Then press the transfer button and wait for 2 to 3 seconds. The weight values have been automatically transferred to the pants. To verify, hold shift in the scene and select a bone to rotate. If the pants mesh moves along with the bone, then the rigging is successful. Now let's mask the vertices. 
This mask marks the parts of the body that don't need to be visible when wearing clothes. Delete the weight transfer mesh pose file used for rigging. Drag the mask prefab file from the provided Zapito helper package folder in the project window into the scene. Set the coordinates of the created mask prefab instance to 0, 0, 0. Unpack the mask prefab instance object and drag it under the pens object in the hierarchy. Arrange the structure so that the pens object is at the top, with the hips object and mask object position below it. Select the mask object and run the vertex color tool in the surface group. Only two colors are used, white for the visible areas and black for the invisible areas. Make sure the color code for white is 255, 255, 255 and for black is 0, 0, 0. By default, everything is white. Therefore, select the black color and choose the vertices hidden by the pants, then click apply to paint them black. If the black area is visible outside the pants, paint it white again to make it invisible. It's better to paint black only up to slightly inside the boundary, rather than up to the edge of the pants. Now the mask file is ready. With this, the entire Zapito item creation process is complete. Finally, let's export it as Zapito data for actual use. First, check that the bone object and mask object are located below the pants object in the hierarchy. At this point, the mask object must have a mask name. Select the topmost pants object and click the export button in the umodeler inspector. The export window appears. Press the export button to output the file. Open the pens prefab file created when exporting to Zapito package and click on the material file inside. The material properties are visible in the inspector. Among these, drag the pens file created during the painting process into the empty slot in the Albedo property. Open the playground scene provided by Zapito. Press the play button at the top to check the Zapito data. Since what we created is a bottom garment, activate, close bottom, and drag the exported Zapito item. The custom made shorts are displayed. Check the data in various poses and upload it to mobile for verification. If there are no issues when checking in Zapato, the Zapato item creation is complete.